Okay, no scripts this time. I'm just going to shout everyone out like my status for this video. Starting with Gurkarat Riar. Oh, it's a. Uh, yeah, Gurkarat Riar. I looked up how to pronounce your first name, bro, but not your last name. So my apologies if I mispronounce your last name. I get my last name mispronounced all the time. Nothing personal. Uh, the second person is Mark Marquez. We go back to high school. He was a skater dude. And, yeah, he was pretty fun. He's a funny guy, actually. So if you're watching this, you got a shout out for me, bro. But anyway, on to the main subject. Yesterday, Sunday night at August the 18th, 2014. So, if you're watching this a millennium later, yeah, this video is dated as fuck. Sorry, go back to your spaceships and whatever. Fuck off and do something else. Uh, there was a pay per view or a special event from WWE known as SummerSlam, it's annual. And the main event for this match was Brock Lesnar versus John Cena. For those of you who are watching Monday Night Raw, you might have thought the main event would have been Stephanie McMahon versus Brie Bella, but no. This time they won something that makes sense. Two dudes decking it out, duking it out actually, for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Now I saw this event on my computer with the WWE Network and for some reason I kept, I keep falling asleep when I watch these WWE events, these pay-per-views or what would have been pay-per-views a year ago. It's like they're the cure for amnesia. Usually I have a really shoddy sleep pattern. But this puts me right back in the standard go to sleep at 11 and wake up at 7 or 8 pattern most people have, or should have. It was horrible. But when I saw the main event, I was revitalized. I was ready to watch this shit. And of course, I was expecting somewhat of a one-sided fight because it's Brock Lesnar but I was expecting it more like Extreme Rules 2012 where Cena started to get the upper hand at some parts and he started getting big moves in doing his typical Superman shit but no this was really one-sided there were a couple of punches from Cena here and there and him trying to power himself out of shit couple of elbows, one attitude adjustment that Lesnar jumped up from and you know he started like dancing and teasing scene like come on I'm ready for more and one STF that's about it near the end like it was actually one of the closing moves the last spots before the finish and one thing I was trying to do while I was watching this match, I was trying to count how many suplexes Brock Lesnar was doing to John Cena. Because for the most part, they were German suplexes. And... Not only that, there was like a few snap suplexes in the mix. But it was rolling Germans, release Germans. It was German mania. Shit was crazy. I mean, John Cena was being tossed around like a rag doll, and he got a F5 within the first like five seconds of the match, and then the finish of the match. That was like the finish. So if you saw Randy Orton versus Triple H at WrestleMania 25, one of the first things that happened was one of the wrestlers used his finisher on the other one, right at the beginning. And then the next minute, the other person does their finisher at him. I think it was like 
Triple H in the pedigree at first, and then or into the RKO next minute, or the other way around, vice versa. But here it's it was like Lesnar did the F five like in the first five seconds, and everyone's thinking, "Holy shit, we already know what kind of match this is." This was that never give up shit from John Cena. Lesnar would decimate and fuck John Cena up, and. John Cena would keep telling the ref, hey, don't call out the match. I'm not done yet, even though I can barely stand up. And that was the match, basically, just Lesnar suplexing Cena all over the place and Cena struggling to get up and telling the ref, hey, don't call out the match, even though Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar were basically like egging on referee to close off the match to like, you know, say, hey, give it a rest. I'm going to end up killing John Cena. And in some parts, I thought, you know what? I'm surprised John Cena isn't dead right now. Like, you can't fake a suplex. John Cena is eating 16 suplexes. I tried counting the suplexes, but I lost count really quickly, like at 7 and 8. If you saw like Yu Yu Hakusho, show, um, there's that fight PA had with this like Ice King in that third story arc. That's what it reminds me of. I really lost count. I'm glad someone was able to capitalize and keep count of that shit because he was doing the releases and then he was doing three rolling suplexes or four followed by a release, you know, trying to one up the late great Chris Benoit. I know Lesnar and Benoit have had their share of excellent matches against one another. SmackDown 2003 shit, but really, this, this was fucking awesome. A lot of us have been traumatized four months ago, many moons ago, when Brock Lesnar ended the streak and we weren't paying attention to that match because it was a very crummy, boring match. Something didn't really fit right. But now, Lesnar got the W and it was a good match in terms of what story it tried to tell. And we're still shocked. Because the only thing crazier than the streak ending is a monster heel beating John Cena, ever, at any situation. Besides Tensai in 2012. I mean, think about it. Who beats John Cena? Future top babyfaces. They're only ones that beat John Cena. CM Punk. Daniel Bryan. Edge. Batista, The Rock. These are the kind of people that beat John Cena. Monster Heels, they don't beat John Cena. They can't beat John Cena. Uh, Triple H has beaten John Cena a few times, cleanly. I think uh, JBL like, snuck a victory in. But other than Tensai in 2012, Monster Heels, they don't beat John Cena, especially in like main event big matches. Tensai just got him like in a Raw, where they were selling the fact that Cena lost his game when he lost to The Rock and got assaulted by Brock Lesnar the very next night. But yeah, this shit doesn't happen. It's safe to say that if you're like the big, heavy, evil-ass monster heel, that you're essentially a meal for John Cena. If you're creepy, or if there's something that has that gives like intimidation factor to your character, you're not just some cowardly chicken shit heel. You're just food for John Cena. You'll get a streak, you know, winning streak, and then. Bam, you're jobbing out to Cena. Ryback. Right Fucking. Oh, 
even Bobby Lashley, even though he was a monster baby face. A lot of these guys, they, they can't do it. They can't beat my boy Cena. Lesnar was the exception. He killed Cena Mania. He killed the C-Nation Mania. Imagine if a big monster heel of the year managed to beat Hulk Hogan. The closest, I think, was Dino Bravo, but Dino Bravo sucks. Andre couldn't do it. Fucking Earthquake couldn't do it. Big, uh... Big Daddy V. Or, uh... Th that guy at the main event of the second WrestleMania. That underrated dude with the good mic skills. It's not Big Daddy Cool. That, that guy died, like, somewhere this year. Vader couldn't do it. Uh, Monster Heels couldn't beat Hogan. People that beat Hogan were future faces or established faces like Ultimate Warrior. Or. Whoa, besides Ultimate Warrior. The Rock. Sting. That's it, like, Big Show couldn't even do it, back when he was a giant in WCW. Rest assured, Cena and Hogan, they don't usually lose to these kind of guys, so I was amused by this. I was amused by the video packaging. I was hoping this would be the main event instead of that Stephanie Bree shit, and thankfully it was. I was expecting... Lesnar to win so that there could be some buzz and we could get like a creative storyline because this guy rarely shows up for WWE matches. He's He un operates under UFC philosophy of fight every few months or once a year or once every other year. That's Lesnar's philosophy so I want to see what they go with that. Where you go? But now for for World Heavyweight Championships, you have Brock Lesnar and you have Bobby Lashley. Same initials, same kind of accolades. Very similar guys, just different races. So hopefully if TNA ever gets like a new television deal because that shit with Spike is long gone because they fucked around with Vince Russo and got caught. Uh, hopefully we'll be seeing more of that. I doubt it. I think TNA is dead. But it's just too bad because I actually liked TNA. Uh, I like how we have like two monster heels running the major nationally televised wrestling companies. The only thing now is that I really want to see how they pull this off. I want, I want to see Raw. Pay-per-views are, to me, they kind of work the op. Usually, television shows like Raw are supposed to promote the pay-per-view. But nowadays, I feel like a good pay-per-view is promotion for Raw. Next day's Raw. It's backwards, but that's how it is in a way. I don't get it. At least I can give WWE credit for that. But moving past this subject, normally I'd hit you with the SMD and close the video right now, but... I found out, because I wanted to talk to this with some of my fans in JTV about this pay-per-view. I found out that Justin TV has been shut down. The app has been shut down. Everything about Justin TV is gone. And it happened August the 5th of this very month. That means for two weeks since uh, last Tuesday, 
we haven't had a the J JTV's gone. I checked the Wikipedia page when I went to JTV and realized it got fucked up. And the Wikipedia page told me the day it happened, and it told me the reason why it happened. It happened so that they could focus all their energies on Twitch. That doesn't surprise me because JTV sold out to gamers a long, long time ago. But, uh, this, that's, well, I'm... I understand why they do it, but JTV for a long time has been taking the short end of the stick ever since Twitch debuted. For a long time, we've had server problems, which is responsible for why I've left a few times. We've had... Oh, even d Six got pissed because of the server problem, and he hit him with the real talk. Fuck JTV. But D6 was, D6 was what made JTV happening. Like, I remember, like, May, June, I was in, J, I was on JTV, like, I was looking at his little coon cast. Don't flag me for racism, that's what he calls him. No, wait, this is coon cast, those are like the... Podcast he was doing, Sigas vlogs, Sigas casts. I have no idea, but that was awesome. Like uh, the fact that he he has to like go somewhere else to do these JTV vlogs or he has to you know these live broadcasts. The fact that my douche cast are gone. Like I have to go to maybe Ustream to do that shit. That's not cool, man. Well, the good thing about this, the silver lining is that we don't have to take abuse anymore because JTV is gone. I'm a gamer now. I upload Let's Plays, and since I've uploaded Let's Plays, I've went from having 181 subscribers to 167. For a long time, I was stuck on 169, so I'm thinking maybe I should just start streaming, because unlike JTV, you could get paid for doing your thing in Twitch TV. I could be getting money doing what I'm scared of doing here on YouTube, so that's fucking awesome. I, I want to get on that right now. I download QuickTime Broadcaster wrap my head around how to make that work because there will be server issues for that best you best believe and I want to hope for a better future because I know that I wouldn't find a better future in JTV or devoting all of my energy just to YouTube I deleted my tumblr because I couldn't stand that tumblr ass community not doing much with Twitter right now, but Twitter, Facebook, whatever. It doesn't matter. This could be my new home away from home if I ever get an account. But I want to give my respects to JTV and all the fun experiences I had on that site. I'm surprised that they haven't, that they kept the URL, they haven't sold it to someone else. And this has been Mr. Wonka 7, suck my dick.